Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including more new Model 3 leaks, new EPA regulations, big Cybertruck features leaking, and more, so let's get into it. First up today, Tesla has cut Model 3 and Y prices once again by up to 10%, this time just in Europe, Israel, and Singapore. After steadily raising prices in 2021 and 2022, Tesla famously slashed prices in the US at the beginning of this year by up to $13,000 for the Model Y and even more for the Plaid Model S. And the whole world started to see these prices reduced. Those price cuts successfully led to Tesla becoming one of the most popular EV brands worldwide from various different studies, and they're still cutting prices. The largest discounts so far is in Germany, France, and the Netherlands, and it equals to about $6,600 USD. According to Fun With Numbers, all trims have been discounted except for the Long Range Model Y in Norway, which increased by about $963 US dollars. According to Reuters, these price cuts are simply in alignment with Tesla's mission. Since the beginning, that mission has been to accelerate the advent of sustainable transport by bringing compelling mass market electric cars to market as soon as possible. Elon Musk detailed in Master Plan Part 1 that the company would first make expensive cars, but that was just to allow them to then make cheaper cars that are more widely available. In anticipation of that new, cheaper vehicle, they find themselves in a position to make their current lineup more accessible. Another theory for these price cuts, though, could be that Tesla is planning to refresh the Model 3, so they're clearing inventory of their older models. We actually have some more updates about that new Project Highland Model 3 today. Recently, we reported a pretty huge leak, and it's looking like this refresh is going to involve a few redesigns. We first heard about Project Highland a few months ago, but details have been scarce. We've known that Tesla will likely change the Model 3's exterior, upgrade its sensors, and completely revamp its manufacturing process, and we've had a number of sightings. Several were spotted on the road, and Tesla is clearly purposely covering up the front and rear of the Model 3. Here you can see one partially covered up, purposely hiding the headlights. The wheels are different, and the side fender line extends further into the driver's side door than a current Model 3 does. We've also heard that Tesla will be adding hardware 4.0 on the new Model 3, and that they could be bringing cameras to the front bumper or headlights. Then we've seen confirmations that Tesla is actually changing the production line in Fremont. Then a huge update came via a source speaking with not a Tesla app. Then last week we finally got a photo of what the updated Model 3 looks like under those covers. It has completely different headlights and a new front bumper, and this one doesn't have a Tesla logo on the hood. We also saw that the fender camera lines that we saw extending into the driver's side door of the other prototype in the wild was also seen here. Now another potential leak has popped up online. A new video from a Chinese vlogger reportedly shows the updated dashboard of the Project Highland Model 3. Reposted on Twitter, the Korean caption says, intelligence that the interior of the new Model 3 is the same as the S slash X. According to this video, the Project Highland Model 3 interior will feature a yoke steering wheel as an option, no gear stocks, a driver's display, and a main center console that is now integrated into the dash like the Model S and X. This dash looks very similar to those cars, but it seems to be made with lower quality materials. A non-woven fabric has been rumored before, and that appears to be what we're seeing here. I'm still skeptical that this is a Project Highland Model 3 though. Tesla just started offering a round steering wheel as an option on the Model S and X, so it would definitely be weird if they didn't offer a round wheel as an option on the Model 3, and I wouldn't be surprised if they leave the yoke for the more expensive vehicles. Reportedly, the vlogger was also sent a photo of the new front bumper from a worker associated with Tesla's supply chain. Compared to the photo that they leaked just a day earlier, they do look identical. All of these leaks line up with a bunch of different rumors that we've seen, so I wouldn't be surprised if this is the updated interior of the Model 3 and Y. However, I'm a little skeptical about that yoke. I think Tesla might keep that being a premium feature on the Model S and X that you can only configure on those cars. But maybe they are bringing it to their entire lineup since those cars are way more popular. Next up today, we've been seeing a few headlines claiming that after years of dominating the EV space, Tesla's market share is decreasing. Automotive News reports that Tesla's, quote, share of the EV market fell sharply from 2022, despite price cuts and a new round of federal tax incentives that favor its US-made vehicles. That makes it sound like Tesla is giving their all to increase sales and it's just not cutting it. That's not quite a fair assessment though. Automotive News cites that at the start of 2022, Tesla saw a growth rate of 74% from January to February. They also had the country's top three EV models and four of the top 10. They go on to say that over the next year, Tesla's quote, growth cooled as their competition increased and they point out that the Model S fell out of the top 10. We've known for a long time that Tesla's lead in the EV space would be impacted by other automakers entering with new EVs but it's easy to blow these numbers out of proportion and assume Tesla is about 
about to take a nosedive. They're not. Even though other automakers are coming out with new EVs every day, Tesla hasn't had any issue maintaining a market share of around 60 to 70%. Critics have referenced their registration numbers though, which don't take into consideration that Tesla's deliveries are somewhat cyclical. In January and February of this year, Tesla had 95,829 new US registrations. That's a 35% increase from the same period last year. Even though that's significant growth, they now only appear to have a 58% market share. Some analysts say this is entirely due to rising competition without looking at the quarterly patterns in Tesla's own deliveries. Tesla builds vehicles in the US to export to other global markets at the beginning of the quarter, so domestic sales appear to spike at the end of the quarter. Once we hear their official financial results for Q1 on April 19th, I'm sure those numbers will likely tell a story of impressive growth. Even if their market share dips to 50%, they are only one company, and there are dozens more working on ramping the availability of their own EVs. Next up today, we have some exciting updates on the Cybertruck. Lately, we've seen the Cybertruck getting its suspension tested at their Fremont factory and saw the rear wheels demonstrating their all wheel turning. We also saw a prototype with new steel wheels rigged with sensors and measuring devices. Then Jeff Roberts got some drone footage of the Cybertruck doing what appears to be wind testing near Giga Texas. Now we have a new video of the Cybertruck's extremely large windshield wiper in action for the first time. When the Cybertruck was first announced, it was obvious that its giant windshield would need a special solution when it came to the wiper. Earlier prototypes had a huge windshield wiper, then later prototypes had a shorter one. We also saw one without any wiper at all, as recently as a few weeks ago, but it just looked like it had been removed, and you could still see the nub where it attaches. Despite all the rain we've been seeing in California, we still haven't seen the wiper in action until now. Thanks to drone footage posted by Brad Sloan, you can see it working, just about how you would expect. Overall, there's not a ton that we didn't expect to see here, but one arm works by itself to clear this huge wind shield. For a side comparison, you can see the truck parked next to several other SUVs, and the Cybertruck's windshield is at least twice as large, at least from what we can tell in these angles. As pointed out by Electrek, they seem to be testing aerodynamics, and the truck is parked on a sort of rotating platform in front of an airflow simulator. It was spotted in the same position yesterday, but this new video is a much higher resolution video, obviously demonstrating this wiper as well. It's not a large enough wind tunnel to be measuring aerodynamics for the entire truck, so they appear to just be testing the wiper under high wind speeds. This late in the game, I doubt Tesla will be making any real cosmetic changes before the truck comes out, so it makes sense that this wiper is in its final stages. It does, however, still look very similar to the wiper that Elon Musk said would not be on the final version of this truck. We'll just have to wait and see if any more changes will be made. At the same time, we have a mega frunk update. It was rumored that the Cybertruck would have a front trunk similar to that of the Ford F-150 Lightning, opening the top and front bumper as the front trunk lid instead of just the top, and now now that's been confirmed. Ford's mega power frunk is very popular among owners, so it makes sense that Tesla would want to take inspiration from it while offering even more storage space in the Cybertruck. The photo was posted by Gregor Truck, confirming the Cybertruck's light bar would lift up when the frunk was opened. This truck is absolutely gigantic though, even wider than an F-150, so that should give it one of the biggest, if not the biggest front trunks we have ever seen on a consumer vehicle. Being that it's a utility vehicle, this should be a feature that owners will appreciate a lot, and it might take that advantage away from Ford. I'm actually already kind of thinking about what kind of organizational accessory I'll have to buy for this to keep things from rattling around because right now it looks like it'll just be a huge open space. Definitely a good problem to have though. In addition to these updates, we've also seen Tesla posting more job listings for Cybertruck related projects based in Texas. Regarding production, the last timeline we heard from Tesla is that production will start this summer, but summer is almost here. Really the last thing they need before starting production is the labor for it. That said, they've posted around 70 positions on their careers page related to the Cybertruck recently, and a lot of those relate to the pickup truck's body. They listed six positions related to Cybertruck castings, 14 related to stamping, and two others related to the body. In addition to those, there were openings for the vehicle's general assembly, battery pack, and drive unit that were posted in February. And in March, interestingly enough, there were jobs hinting that the Cybertruck would have paint on it, something that we've been led to believe would not be the case. Overall, all these sightings support the fact that Tesla is going to be sticking to this final deadline. This truck has been delayed many times, but it's starting to look like that's all in the past, at least for the start of production, not necessarily ramping of production. Next up today, it was rumored last week that the EPA would be implementing a new rule that would force automakers to go electric. It was expected to be the federal government's most aggressive climate legislation yet to make the US a world leader in the efforts to cut transportation emissions. This comes after an executive order in 2021 that set the goal for half of all new vehicles sold in the US in 2030 to be zero emissions. Since then, the number of available EV models has doubled 
doubled, charging stations have doubled, and total EV deployment has tripled, according to White House climate advisor Ali Zaidi. Thanks to many things, including the infrastructure bill passed in 2021 and the Inflation Reduction Act passed in August of last year, resources have shifted significantly towards the production of new EVs. Zaidi said this should lead to 13 million vehicles worth of batteries being produced in the U.S. in 2030, which will be more than enough to meet these new targets. Apparently, these regulations were so effective that it now makes sense to set even higher goals for 2030. Specifically, they now aim for the EV market share to be about 60% by 2030 and 67% by 2032. The EPA's official announcement of these new regulations came on Wednesday last week, but it's still just proposed regulation and will go through public comment and alteration before being finalized. The way the new rules plan to accomplish this goal is to target average fleet CO2 emissions rather than EV registrations specifically. It'll be mandated that fleet emissions will have to drop by an average of 13% per year between 2026 and 2032 to achieve 82 grams of CO2 per mile by 2032. In 2021, the average new vehicle emitted 347 grams of CO2 per mile. That's over four times as much as will be allowed in 2032. CO2 isn't the only emission being tracked though. They've also set targets for nitrogen oxides, particle matter, volatile organic compounds, sulfur dioxide, and other pollutants to be cut in half. Nothing was said about BEVs being the solution, but that's likely the technology that automakers will lean on in the coming years because they will run cleaner than hybrids and are more efficient than ICE vehicles will ever be. Beyond passenger cars, the new rules cover medium and heavy duty vehicles, and each of those categories also have specific targets. The EPA also predicts that these standards will increase deployment of vocational vehicles, such as electric delivery trucks, dump trucks, public transit vehicles, and school buses. They estimate 50% of those to be electric by 2032. The thing that should appeal to everyone is that based on their cost benefit analysis, they estimate these changes will save Americans at least $1 trillion in the long term. That'll come from lifetime savings, just owning a more efficient vehicle, as well as hundreds of billions in health and climate benefits. Americans will also be reducing their dependence on foreign oil in the process. An additional benefit these regulations will have for consumers is that a minimum EV battery warranty of eight years and 80,000 miles will be established, and an onboard battery health monitor will be required. The EPA also mentioned that GM, the largest automaker in the US, requested 2035 to be the all-electric target, but they still decided to set the target three years earlier. As I mentioned earlier, these proposed regulations will go up for public review, where the EPA will also be accepting feedback on three other plans of action. Only 3.2% of all vehicles sold in the US in 2021 were electric, and that jumped to 5.8% in 2022. Clearly, a lot of changes are going to have to be made, and these rules might end up a bit less strict, but it's also possible that in another two years, the EPA will be coming out with new rules with even higher goals for 2032. We'll have to see, and a lot of automakers have a lot of work ahead of them to meet these goals. Tesla is better set up than anyone to definitely meet these goals. Last up today, some updates from other automakers. VW unveiled their ID7, their mid-size sedan, earlier this year at CES. Now we have the first leaked images of it without camouflage. Its official world premiere will be on Monday, April 17th in China, but we already know a lot of the details that'll be announced. This is VW's sixth EV and will be based on their MEB platform, but will have a new electric drive motor that VW says will give it more power and make it more efficient than their other MEV models. Unlike the prototype shown in January, this production model has a full light bar across the front, giving it more of a futuristic look. In this photo of the rear, you can see the name Vision, so it looks like it might be called the ID7 Vision in China. As for dimensions, it'll be seven inches longer than the Model Y, three inches skinnier, and four inches shorter. It'll have 201 horsepower, a 77 kilowatt hour battery, about 434 miles of range, likely on the WLTP standard, and have a max speed of 155 kilometers per hour, which is actually less than 100 miles per hour. Most people won't be buying this car to take it to the drag strip, so that'll be more than enough for most people, but I'm also assuming there will be some changes made to that model when it eventually gets released in the US. First, it will be released in China and Europe. Over at Rivian, they're facing another recall. This time, 5,030 R1S SUVs have been recalled because their backup lights don't meet federal requirements. This is their second recall in the last month, and it's not something that can be fixed with an over-the-air software update. That first one was over side curtain airbags not being installed properly, and now their backup lights don't meet federal requirements for visibility. After conducting an investigation, they discovered on March 8th that the lights might not be visible from all angles. The solution will be a required visit to a Rivian service center 
center where the faulty backup lights will be replaced with ones that do meet visibility requirements. While this does slightly increase the risk of a crash, none have been reported in correlation to this issue, and the car still emits its pedestrian warning sound when reversing. There are also many other vehicle sensors that detect pedestrians and other objects in close proximity that are working fine. According to NHTSA, the recalling models built between November 19th, 2021, which is also the very start of R1S production, and March 21st, 2023, which was just a few weeks ago. So almost every R1S on the road is going to require a service appointment here, an unfortunate and unnecessarily costly repair that Rivian has to do on all of these vehicles. They could have just gotten it right the first time. That's all the latest Tesla news for today. So in the meantime, if you wanna see all the latest for that new Model 3, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.